And good afternoon, Your Honor. Sean Huey for the state H U G H E Y, R number 152776. Okay. We acknowledge receipt of this charging instrument and will proceed as truly named, waived for the reading and advice of rights, reserve rights read into the record earlier this morning, and are of not guilty and request court dates. Trial date is May 17th at 9 a.m. on the C. I would move. I would move the court to increase that amount, noting uh, for the court that at the time of this uh, new offense, the defendant was on a security release for a pending and open violation of the court's stocking protective order case. Same stocking order, uh, same protective party, where the defendant posted 10 percent of a $7,500 bail. Uh, so I would. I would move the court to increase bail. Um, to fifty thousand dollars in this case. Yeah. Okay. And that, that's eighteen CR five seven five zero zero. The court can see that um, that security agreement was posted and entered into on September thirteenth of two thousand eighteen. Your Honor, we would object to an increase in bail, Your Honor. He made all prior court appearances on the bail that he had previously posted on the case that he was on super or was out of custody on prior to this new charge. And the state's request is to increase it from 2500 to 7500 That's right. No, to, to 50000 Your Honor. 50, yeah. um, I think there, it had been, let's see, he had been booked in at, uh, increased bail to 250000 um, The charging instrument was generated kind of with the standard uh, bail schedule for a Class A misdemeanor, which is 2500 uh, Less so based on a concern over Mr. Ritchie returning to court appearances and more so over a uh, pretty substantial concern of him continuing to reoffend. And that's based in part on the fact that you have an open stocking protective order violation case. Same protected party. Um, there is a second uh, violation that brings us here today, an alleged violation at this time. Um, and so the basis for my request for an increase in bail uh, is, is for that reason that there's a open case, same victim, same protected party, the, the case is you know, similar charges and arises out of the same stocking protective order. Um, where the defendant had already posted a security amount higher than um, than the 2,500 in this case. Good afternoon, Judge Noah Horst, H O R S T. My bar number is zero seven six zero eight nine. This case was docketed for two thirty, so my apologies for being about fourteen seconds late. I do have uh, copies of notices of representation on these two new cases as they appeared in OECI. Oh, excellent. Which one was that, Kaya? Um, 
Okay, I've got copies on two, three, three, one, nine, and also two, three, three, two, one. I also drafted uh, in the last 15 minutes a motion to vacate what appeared to me to be a <clears throat> unilateral decision by a recognizance officer to increase bail on the felony case, which it sounds like has been reduced to 200, excuse me, from 250, and I, what I caught here was that the prosecution is arguing that that be increased to $50,000. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm unaware of a felony case. The papers I have in front of me reflect a misdemeanor. I think the booking was inaccurately processed as a, as a felony violation of the court's stock and protective order. Um, In any event, Judge, uh, this motion applies to our bail argument, regardless of whether a case has been dismissed or not. And if I could forward, a, it's just a page and a half, a copy to the court and the state, I'd like to do that now. Any That's fine. May I approach it? make sure that I'm clear what we're here on because there seems to be some confusion. So we have one misdemeanor count, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And I think, I think, Your Honor, there had initially been a case number that Mr. Ritchie was booked under reflecting a charge of stalking. Um, my understanding is that then either Portland Police or the jail realized that was an error tried to correct it to violation of the court's stocking protective order, which is the charge, but I think at that time inadvertently corrected that charge to the right charge, but that can be classified as a felony or a misdemeanor, um, and it was classified as a felony at the time of booking. Okay. At least that's, that's my sort of a you know, Okay, and so we have the new count is the violation of the court's stocking protective order, which is a class A misdemeanor, charging instrument refers to a security amount of 2500 and you said that that's because it just kicks it out normally and you're asking for an increase correct that's correct okay $50, what I'm going to do is I based on the information in the affidavit of probable cause to support continued detention uh, I do find that there is behavior outlined there to cause some concern um, however, I don't believe an increase in the amount requested by the state is appropriate. I will increase the security to $5,000. And I think... Judge, I don't know whether Mr. Ritchie was arraigned. Thank you for considering my motion. Sure. Um, and I'm happy to do the arraignment. He was arraigned. He was, yes, okay. he was Thank arraigned. Thank you. On this case, I have played. Kimmy White. White from the Public okay. Defender's Office entered a not guilty plea on your behalf, sir. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. And 
Judge, we would ask uh, that any bail that's been previously posted on this case be applied to the court's uh, order of $5,000 bail here, which it, it means to me that he should. We have a different booking, so I really cannot bail on this case. According to the jail, the bail is on a different booking. I can't apply this case since that booking doesn't really exist could, for us. Could we have a court order to apply? To refund the bail? Can we do that? No, it's a booking that's a non compayment. So, so, but, so how does he get the money back then? They're going to be sent to him automatically within four to six. Judge, here's my concern about that. I, I, I understand um, he has posted, I believe, how much did he post? Uh, yesterday, the last, yesterday the bill was enhanced from $250 to $2,500, or so the 10%. And so, so you posted, he posted the $2,500 after I was told that it would be enhanced. Okay. And so that's that, when okay, good. everything went crazy. It felt okay, like, wait. So Judge, he's posted, it sounds like $2,500. The bail, my understanding, is now set at five thousand dollars. If that were applied, he would be released today. Um, I would ask that since that amount has been uh, posted previously, uh, since you'll see in my motion that two other judges have ordered that Mr. Ritchie have permission to travel around the United States and also to simply just be released on his own recognizance, that you, uh, given the information about the previously posted bail in the other case and the bureaucratic hangup in getting that applied, it could take months. Um, I would ask that you consider reducing the bail uh, to zero on this case. And if, if necessary, uh, Mr. Ritchie could report uh, to pretrial release and then apply a bail at a, at a later date. Your Honor, I would again object to any further reduction. Judge's orders on a pending case prior to being arrested on a new case, uh, I don't think should weigh very heavily on the court's consideration of not so much whether he's going to come back to court, but whether or not he's going to continue to violate the court's order yeah. with respect to the soccer protect order. I understand that, but I'm sure you can also understand this administrative problem seems like it's resulting in something that seems unfair to me. So I'm not sure how we best get there, um, but I have increased the bail, not to the extent that was requested by the state, but I've, I've doubled the bail, um, and I am looking for a way for us to solve this. What I'd like to do is order it, return to him, so that if there's a means to do so, So what the order will say is that $500 of the posted bill will be transferred to this new case number and the balance to be returned to him. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate that. Uh, and, and I believe it's the understanding of all the parties that he will be released today. If there's an issue, with that, I'll take that up with the court tonight. I can sit tight if you want to recall the case.
Mr. Horst? Yes, Judge. Can we hold on just a second? I want to make sure I do something correctly. Yes. I just want to clarify something that I think is important here. The Justice Center is where Mr. Ritchie has been taken upon his arrest, which is where the Chief of Police works. The precinct office is on second. The Justice Center, which may require other court appearances, is on third. I just want to make sure that the court's order is very clear about specifically where and how he is prohibited from entering this space because I think it's sort of a combined space uh, for the police and for the justice system. So I think we're going to be recalling the case, correct? So may I ask you two to confer on what would be a reasonable yes. additional condition? Um, and do you understand why, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it? Yes. Okay. okay. So if, if you two can consult and let's see if there's a way to do this so that everybody's clear about what, what can and cannot be done. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. 